back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys! So I'm here today to announce an exciting reading project that I have decided to challenge myself with. And if you would like to join in with me on some of this challenge or all of it, please feel free to do so. Basically this year I've decided I want to read a lot more fiction, science fiction and fantasy from before 2000 because I have noticed over the past few years, although I love new releases and I absolutely have so much fun reading them, I don't really read enough older fantasy and older science fiction to make myself feel good, so I want to discover those voices that I don't yet know that are great, and I want to discover those people who have made a name in those genres, fantasy and science fiction, and that I just haven't got to yet because they don't have a shiny new book coming out. So my plan for the year is to read a lot more science fiction and fantasy from women in particular because they are less published in sci-fi and fantasy generally from before 2000. This ties in really well with the podcast that I run with Chelsea from The Reading Outlaw and Elizabeth from Books and Pieces. It's also a project, kind of a passion project for me, it's something I want to do because I love the idea of discovering female writers who write in the genres I love and that I just don't know about yet and I know there are tons of them out there but not all of them are given the recognition they deserve so I want to try and find those authors and I've decided I'm going to start off by reading a lot of the SF Masterworks, which are these. If you've never seen them before, the SF Masterworks is a series that is published by Galantz. They publish the SF Masterworks, which are science fiction masterworks, and also fantasy masterworks, which are basically the same idea but with fantasy books. They have bought out a whole range of these, I think there's like 70 or more, something ridiculous like that. I only have these three at the moment, but... I decided to get in contact with Galantz, tell them about my idea of trying to read science fiction from women before 2000 and I had a look through all of their listings and I decided I kind of just wanted to read everything that they'd published that was by women so it was a challenge I was setting for myself. And they were very 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 kind and really wanted to get involved with the project. So I have these three already, I bought these myself. I've shown you them before, it's Sherry S. Tepper, The Gate to Women's Country, Ursula Le Guin's The Dispossessed, which I'm currently reading, and The Female Man by Joanna Russ, which I'm not currently reading but I will be as soon as I finish this one because I'm doing buddy reads of both of these on my Goodreads group in January, so I'm probably bleeding a little bit into February with this one, so definitely come and join me if you want to for those buddy reads. I will be commenting on my thoughts and getting all excited in the Goodreads group and also tweeting about it and Instagramming about it, so follow me on all of those things, join me if you want to, I'm doing buddy reads of these two. Like I say, Galantz were incredibly, incredibly nice and really wanted to get involved with this project, so they said to me that they would be happy to send me all of the authors' science fiction and fantasy masterworks published in their range by women. <laughs> and I said, uh, wow, yes, please, please do, that is amazing. So this box turned up, <laughs> and when I say it's a box, it this is the box. It's really big, it's quite heavy, and it's filled with books. I have undone it because I wanted to just check it was the right thing and not something else random that turned up. It is, and inside, I'll try and show you but I don't know how well it's going to go, there's a load of books. I decided I wanted to open these on camera with you because although I went through the whole list and made sure that they all sounded interesting, I can't remember them all individually. So I'm going to whiz through them and quickly tell you a bit about each. I'll be reading as many of these as I possibly can throughout 2017, possibly on to 2018 if I don't get through them all. But I'm going to try and do about two a month and we'll see how that goes. So let's get started unboxing. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull out a Fantasy Masterworks one first. This is the logo for the Fantasy Masterworks, slightly different from the SF Masterworks, but very similar in that they all look very standard on the shelf and they look really nice when you put them all together. So this one is Patricia A. McKillop's The Forgotten Beasts of Eld. I have read some Patricia A. McKillop and I do like her, so that's good. It says, Sybil, the beautiful great-granddaughter of the wizard Hield, has grown up on Eld Mountain with only the fantastic beasts summoned there by wizardry as companions. She cares nothing for humans until when she is 16, a baby is brought for her to raise. A baby who awakens emotions that she's never known before. From what I know of Patricia A. McKillop, she writes quite a lot of 
standalones. The next one I have is also a Patricia A. McKillop. This is the Riddle Masters game. It says it's in a land where wizards have long since vanished. Morgan, Prince of Head, is confronted with a challenge much different from that faced by his landbound predecessors. Although he only wants to rule and work in the land of his birth, he must instead wander foreign realms full of untamed magic in the form of riddling wraiths. Mysterious harpists, a lost crown, a magical sword and an all-knowing high one who rules over all. I love the cover of this one. I think it's really, really beautiful. And I love the kind of combination of like mustard and purple. I just think they look really great together. So I'm super excited for this one. This one's a bit of a longer one, but definitely exciting. The next one I have is a fantasy masterworks, but it's actually also by Sherry S. Tepper, who does science fiction ones too. And this is called Beauty. Again, I love, 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 love the illustration. It says, on her 16th birthday, the Princess Beauty sidesteps the sleeping curse placed upon her by her wicked aunt, the fairy Carabos, only to be kidnapped by visitors from another time and place far from her picturesque castle in the 14th century England. She's taken to the world of the future, a savage society where, even amongst the teeming billions, she is utterly alone. But as she travels magically to places both imaginary and real, Beauty eventually comes to understand her special place in humanity's destiny. That sounds really good. I'm guessing it's a Sleeping Beauty retelling, but it sounds really, really good and I'm super excited. I've never read any Sherry S. Tepper yet, but I am so excited to do so. The next one I have is a Connie Willis book and it's called To Say Nothing of the Dog. Now I've heard of Connie Willis and she's always one of those people who's cited as being a really great science fiction writer. I've never read any of her work, so I'm excited to do so. Ned Henry is a time-travelling historian who specialises in the mid-20th century. He's also made so many drops into the past that he's suffering from a dangerously advanced case of time lag. Unfortunately for Ned, an emergency dash to Victorian England is required, and he's the only available historian. But Ned's time lag is so bad he's no longer sure what his errand actually is, which is bad news since, if he fails, history could unravel all around him. This sounds great. <laughs> I'm saying this about every book, but they really do all sound good, which is why I said, yes, please send me all of them. Again, I love the cover. It's really beautiful. And that's the spine. It's quite a chunky one, but oh, so exciting. And this one actually won a Hugo Award for best novel. So that says it's a winner. The next one I have is a book I have already read, but I don't actually own a copy of, and this is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Frankenstein is obviously a hugely popular story. It's about a monster that is built by a mad scientist, and he manages to bring it to life, and things start to go a little bit wrong. Um, it's a great story. I actually studied it in school, and I'm really looking forward to going back and rereading it in this edition, because I haven't read it since I was about 15 years old, so it's quite a long time, but I remember loving it, and I'm definitely excited. The next one I have is by Murray Constantine and this one is called Swastika Night. It says 700 years after Nazism achieved power Hitler is worshipped as a god. The fascist Germans and Japanese struggle to maintain their populations. An Englishman named Alfred is on a German pilgrimage. According to official history Hitler is the tall blonde god who personally won the war. Alfred is astounded when shown a photograph of Hitler before a crowd. He is shocked that Hitler was a small man with dark hair and a paunch, and Alfred's discovery may mean his death. Apparently Murray Constantine is actually a pseudonym for the feminist SF writer Catherine Burdekin, and it sounds as though it's going to be really hard-hitting and kind of influential and exciting, so I'm very excited for this one. Oh, here's another book I've already read. I really enjoyed this one. It's called Sinners. It's by Pat Cadigan. Again, this was a winning book. It won the Arthur C. Clarke Award. And this is a cyberpunk read. It was the first cyberpunk I'd ever read. It was definitely weird. Really, really weird. It's about this kind of blurring the lines between machinery, technology and people and how people can get sucked into this crazy new world. I don't want to say too much about it because I think it's it's one of those books that you can't really explain without having read it and I think it would be a great book to reread because it was quite complicated but if you want to know more about this in spoilery detail or if you're just interested then we actually did a Magical Space Pussycat talk about this very early on so definitely listen to that if you've not already and I'm super excited to now have an actual copy of it. The next one I have is by James Tiptree Jr and it's called Her Smoke Rose Up Forever. I'm so excited to have a James Tiptree Jr book. 
I've never read any of her work and I don't know how I haven't because I hear her talked about a lot from various people saying that she's fantastic. So I'm really, I'm failing somewhere by not having read her books. Her actual name is Alice Sheldon. She wrote most of her fiction under the pseudonym of James Tiptree Jr. until her identity was exposed in 1977. This volume presents the finest of the stories that she wrote and contains the Nebula Award winning Love is the Plan, The Plan is Death, the Hugo Award winning novella The Girl Who Was Plugged In, Houston Houston Do You Read, winner of both Hugo and Nebula, and of course the story for which she is best known, The Women Men Don't See. It sounds like it's going to be utterly fantastic. I love the cover of this one. I think they do some weird stuff with their covers but it really really works and this looks like it's gonna just, it's gonna blow my mind, I'm sure about that. Oh, it's so exciting, so exciting. I might have to split this into two parts, guys, because there's so many books. The next one I have is by Nicola Griffith, who is an author I hadn't heard of before looking into the SF Masterworks, and it's called Slow River. It says, she awoke in an alley to the splash of rain. She was naked, a foot-long gash in her back was still bleeding, and her identity implant was gone. Law Van Oosterling had been the daughter of one of the world's most powerful families and now she was nobody. Now she had to hide. Then out of the rain walked Spanner, predator and thief who took her in, cared for her wound and taught her to reinvent herself. And now Law worked for her. Dun dun dun! That sounds super dramatic. Awesomeness. I like stuff with implants. That sounds a weird thing to say but I like stuff with that kind of creepy technology that goes inside your brain and stuff. Cool. The next one I have is a beautiful looking one. It's by Cecilia Holland and it's called Floating Worlds. And this one says, the Stiths, a powerful and aggressive mutant race from Uranus and Saturn, have been launching pirate raids on ships from Mars. Earth's committee for the revolution has been asked to negotiate a truth between the middle planets and the Stith Empire. The task falls to the resourceful and unpredictable Paula Mendoza. Her initial meetings with the Stith Warlord does not go well until she adopts an unconventional approach. Sounds really interesting. Apparently this is Cecilia Holland's only novel. I hope it's really good. I mean, if it's managed to make it onto this list of SF masterworks and she's only got one book, it must be good, right? So very excited. The next one I have is another Sherry S. Tepper. This is one I have been really looking forward to because I've heard a couple of different people have read this and talked about it and really enjoyed it. It's called Grass. Um, it says, generations ago humans fled to the cosmic anomaly known as grass, but before humanity arrived another species had already claimed grass for its own. It too developed a culture. Now a deadly plague is spreading across the stars, leaving no planet untouched save for grass. But the secret of the planet's immunity hides a truth so shattering it could mean the end of life itself. Dun dun dun! Uh, I'm gonna keep doing that I think because it's just every book sounds so so good. I'm so excited! And they look really good piled up. I'll show you them at the end because they look really really lovely piled up. So cool. So the next one I have is a fantasy one. It's by Ellen Kushner and it's called Thomas the Rhymer. It says, a minstrel lives by his words, his tunes, and sometimes by his lies, but when the bold and gifted young Thomas the Rhymer awakens the desire of the powerful queen of Elfland, he finds that words are not enough to keep him from his fate. Very interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Ooh. The next one I have is an Ursula Le Guin book, which is super great because I am really loving her stuff right now. This one is called Always Coming Home, and it's got a very dramatic looking owl on the cover. He looks quite an intense one. <laughs> it says, A long, long time from now, in the valleys of what will no longer be called Northern California, might be going to have lived a people called the Kesh. But Always Coming Home is not the story of the Kesh, rather it is the stories of the Kesh. Stories, poems, songs, recipes, Always Coming Home is no less than an anthropological account of a community that does not yet exist, a tour de force of imagination fiction by one of modern literature's greatest voices. Ominous, very ominous. Ursula Le Guin has a fantastic style and way she does things, so I'm excited for this. I'm gonna have to split this into two parts because I've still got two whole stacks of books. Look, so much still to go. But I am so excited and I cannot wait to read these. So if you want to see part two, it will be coming super, super soon definitely keep your eyes open for it and let me know out of the ones I've shown you so far which ones you're excited about 
if you're excited about this project generally. I know that I will definitely be doing stuff with Galantz in future. Uh, it's going to be really good. I'm so, so thankful for all these books. I'm, I'm feeling very, very overwhelmed with how many amazing things I've been sent. So thank you so much to Galantz and I cannot wait to start reading them all. I am so excited. So please do let me know down below what you're excited for, whether you're going to pick any of them up and join me, please do. And look out for part two, which will be on its way really, really soon. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book and come back and chat with me again.